Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In this episode I'm going to be talking about different kinds of disassembly items. That would be um, code, instructions, undefined bytes and so on. Then we'll talk about what makes those items, how can we get uh, what we call flags, how can we read bytes, how can we reason about those items that are explicitly defined in the database. So with that, let's get started. Uh, the first uh, thing I, I would like to show you is just how things look in IDA. So when we talk about an item, you can think of an item as any entity that has an address. Uh, so for example, at this address here, this is an item. This item has two bytes. You can see as well from the address sizes that this is a two bytes item. Uh, the beginning of the item is, cons is called, in AIDA, is called the head. And so here, this address, 531.528, the 528 is the head. 529 is, is a tail, is part of a head, of a, the head of a defined item. So same story here, we have an item. Its head is at 52A and it has multiple tail items, they're not head. So one quick way, if we have an address, that's defined in IDA, we can tell whether that address is in the beginning of an item or in the middle of an item. And this applies to data, for example, a string or an array. Any item not in the beginning can be considered part of the tail of the array. So we have the concepts of uh, heads and tails, basically. So in, the, in this case right now, we are positioned on an item belonging to a function and this item is a, is a, is code. We could have items that are also code but are not part of a function. So I got rid of the function, no function. I can tell from the color here and uh, we don't have a function name here. This is an item but it's just an instruction not belonging to a function. Let's uh, undefine this and this is this is an item and it's unexplored. We can make a data, for example, let's say D word. Now that's a data item, we can tell from the color and so on. And the last form of representation of an item, uh, if, if it's not uh, code or basic data type, it could be a composite type like a structure item or a string or an array essentially. So here in the edit menu, array creates a an item code creates an item, data creates an item, structure variables creates an item. So these are all items. With items, we have addresses. From the item address, we can get its flags. Let's talk about flags. So in IDA, we have a concept of a flag. And without getting into too much details about the flags, behind the scenes, flags are associated with an item address and uh, they encode in, in the flag bits. So what is a flag? Let's look at the flag. It's just a number. And in the flag bits, we will find flags such as, for example, FF IVL. Does it have a value? We have so many flag bits, basically. And we, we have helper methods. For example, we have a flag designating if it has a name and so on. But we don't really directly access those, we will use helper methods. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, keep one code, one unexplored, and one data. So here let's call it data1. We have a couple of uh, unexplored and we have here uh, instructions. Let's create here call this flags and let's get started. So we say f equals get flags at a given address I'm gonna use here idc.here. Now once we get the flags we can reason about those flags. So for example we can say print uh, is code true or false. Basically, you can say at API dot is code and we pass the flags. 
let me clear the screen here add IPR message clear and press alt R and see what happens now when the cursor is positioned here alt R it says is code true now if I position the cursor here and rerun the snippet control shift X it says is code false so that's already a very good hint so now let's do something like this is unknown hide API dot is unknown let me double check the name so I, I press control dot to go down to the CLI and type is un and press enter uh, tab so I have its full name so unknown and flag print is data let me double check the name all right and we can also question mark here and we can see checks the flag see if it's data so if we go to the bytes.hpp just to see what how many flag methods we have we have a lot of is methods is alignment is uh, bitwise not is it a byte is it code is it data is it a function at that address flag uh, and so is it an offset or print so we can uh, do those quick tests to see what item we're dealing with under the cursor so I'm gonna just test for is data and run it so here as you can see it is only unknown it's not code it's not data and finally here if I run it Control shift X it will say it's not code it's not unknown it's data and I'm gonna print one more uh, one more flag has name to see if there's a name at this uh, address so run it does have name here I called it data one here let's call it here name two it, but it will say it has a name but it is unknown so it's unknown and has a name last test is let's uh, check the head and tail as well give you uh, an example let's take the address here and make it address plus one just to illustrate that there will always be a tail when it's a tail it can be a head and, and vice versa so let's take the flag for the next address and uh, here is head is head for the first flag and is head for the second flag and then we'll do the is tail check and you'll get the idea and these are very helpful functions when you're doing some deobfuscation work and so on. Okay, so here it's unknown. It's undefined, completely undefined. Of course, it won't be a head or a tail or anything of that sort. It's uh, completely no head or tail if it's undefined. So let's use this one here, Control Shift X. So as you notice, for uh, let's put it here for address EA and here for EA plus one and just to be visible hmm. so as you see when it's head so I put the cursor anyway the cursor cannot be focused in either UI except on the head of an item so when I put the cursor here it says yeah it's a head but for the address plus one it, it's always a tail so let's say you're writing a script you, you decode an instruction it's a jump you want to see if it's jumping to the middle of another instruction you take the operand, so the jump has an operand, the operand, if it's not a register, uh, it could be a near, so it's O underscore near type, then you, you say operand dot address, then you get the flags, you check the is tail, if the tail is true, that means you are jumping to a middle of an instruction. All right, so this is for the flags. <coughs> now, let's talk about uh, other aspects of the items. So apart from like getting the flags and so on, we can programmatically uh, create items. So for example, here it's undefined. I can say id API dot uh, uh, create create instruction uh, here, and uh, it makes code. Let's let's make data. Let's suppose I'm here. Let's call this db one two three. All right, so for this one, for example, let's say uh, create byte. 
so I'm gonna say ida API dot create bytes here. Now let's see the arguments. How many? It should take uh, the address and how many bytes. So here, ea and length. So let's say create here a one. So here you can see we created a single byte. Let's uh, repeat it here. Let's make a byte here and then make it a character operand. So create the byte first. Now it's defined. Now we can say op IDAPI dot op character change the operand representation for this address uh, for operand zero. Make it a character. So operand character for this address operand zero. And once it's executed, it programmatically changed the representation and so on. So all of those in bytes.hpp, it's worthwhile looking what uh, methods uh, you have to change the operand types, for example. Um, change it to enum, structure offset, character, and also the test methods like is, is this, is that, and so on. And by the way, uh, you can use the UI to query the flags real quick. There's a hotkey called F. So if I press F, I quickly get the string representation of flags saying uh, unexplored or not code. It should be here, print internal flags. So view, print internal flags, I get this. So here, this is defined. Let's see what the print internal flags would show us. It shows us that, yeah, this is, is data and it's a string and so on. So that's really internally calling get flags and formatting the whole flag thing as a string. So let's talk about bytes and strings and so on. Um, many people would want to read information from the database. Now to get the byte at a given address, we can use idapi.getbyte and give it the address. Uh, here, let's uh, run it. And I got the byte value, 71, which is basically uh, the, the byte value. You can equally get a, a word value. So here I got the byte. Let's display this as hex. So let's just uh, and instead we get byte, get word. Let's uh, show you the address details and here and also show you my script. So here, so let's print this. So here we see four seven six five forty seven and so on. So we have get word, uh, get d word. And so on. Uh, get q word. We also have methods such as um, IDA API dot get bytes you can say I want to get more bytes. So here, let's suppose when I get all of those uh, here, get bytes here, let's say I'm taking just 10. And what will this give us? It gives us a byte array. So here it's a B. So it's not a string. If we want to treat it as a string, you'll have to decode it. So normally we can just say uh, decode as UTF if that's what you think. So here decode to convert from byte array or the bytes object to a string. But there's a better way. So get bytes will give you binary bytes. You get a buffer, you work with them. But if you know you're dealing with strings, there's another way as well to retrieve those uh, database items. So to get a string, we have a method in IDA API also in bytes dot HPP is called get uh, string lit content. So get string literal content. <coughs> so uh, let's see it's uh, either Python version. We know this will become the output argument. We have to pass the address, a len optional. We can have either try to guess the length. The string type, if we're dealing with C string, Pascal string, Unicode string, and so on. So I want to programmatically, given this address, retrieve this whole string, and we want to treat it as a zero term string. So question mark, add API dot get string literal contents. First time we use it, let's take a quick look what we have here. So it says uh, address, length, and type, and so on.
so for the len, uh, we don't have to specify it. We can guess it if we pass minus one. For the type, we have to specify uh, one of the str flags. We'll, we'll talk about them. So here it types, it says str type. So let's get some of the string types, str type c. I think it's an nalt.hpp. Let's double check. All right, so the string types, uh, for py either Python, we will just say at API dot, we get str type. So I know I want uh, str type c. Okay, so either API dot get str lit contents. And uh, ea is uh, idc dot here. Len is minus one. So uh, just get as much as you can find. The type is string type dot c, and, and the flags for now, I don't care about the flags. And look what we got. We did get get module handle w. This is uh, without explicitly, explicitly specifying the lengths. We just said minus one. And so we can use get str lit contents to get uh, smart strings. So now let's try to find a Unicode string. Let's just add only Unicode here just to see. Oh, I don't have any Unicode string here. I can illustrate. Uh, but if we had one, I would have simply sh changed the string type. So here I would have, for example, C16. So it's a zero terminated string of 16-bit, uh, for example. If it was a Pascal string, which the length character is a one byte Pascal string, 16 bits uh, Pascal strings and whatnot. So one more, uh, one last thing uh, for today uh, is uh, patching bytes. So we can use uh, the patch methods, the same way we get get bytes, we can use patch bytes, patch word and so on. And if we change our minds, we have a revert byte methods and so on. I hope that was useful. Uh, if you have questions, please uh, please leave them below and uh, see you next time.